Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very conscious I'm one of the very few things between you and lunch, so I'll keep this, uh, try to keep it short and crisp. Um, I'll be bringing in some, having seen how a lot of the kind of insights today came around communities and networks, um, some of our kind of research and practice over the last years, and hopefully a couple of, of the insights that came out of it. Um, and one of the things that, that really struck me, um, particularly in, in, in our research, was that essentially when you look at the world today, uh, how organizations work, how a lot of communities work, they're essentially still based on this very old Maslow hierarchy of needs, you know? Um, most of you probably, who of you came across Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Yeah, most of you. So you know, you first fulfill material needs, then safety needs, then emotional needs, and if you still have time one day, then you self-actualize, then you kind of do the creative things, then you become authentic, right? So someone like Bill Gates, he first sets up Microsoft, makes a lot of money, and then sets up a foundation and gives it all back. You first do well, then you do good. Now you have more primary needs emerging, like electricity and batteries and Wi-Fi. Uh, but essentially, it's kind of the idea of walking up the hierarchy or walking it down. Uh, that's unfortunately also how a lot of uh, communities and NGOs, particularly when it comes to more vulnerable populations, are organized. We work a lot in South Africa, Kenya, um, in the low-income contexts in, in those countries. And um, it's always unbelievable to me to see the Western arrogance of assuming that people just want better food um, and better shelter, and this idea that it's all about pushing resources in. It's actually quite the opposite. It's about trying to understand, and I think we talked about this in some of the sessions earlier, trying to understand how can we build the capacity, the platform, so that people can actually make their own ideas happen and be proud of what they do and, and really have a certain meaning. So what we believe is, is emerging is kind of an enlightened circle of needs, so that people want to fulfill those needs at the same time in all geographies, um, in all kind of socioeconomic backgrounds, and that we actually need to be able to understand that it's, you know, it's about building communities and companies that make this kind of idea of an enlightened self-interest come alive. So this idea that if I have a circle of needs, the more I can cater to the circle of needs of others, the more actually they can cater and want cater back to me. So it's this kind of enlightened self-interest um, model of capitalism that is emerging. And um, that kind of leads us to this. Those of you who are interested, um, if you Google um, our names and kind of what we're doing here, um, we do a lot around how do you actually build communities or networks um, that can make that happen and build these relationships. Um, so these are kind of really going from action-driven purpose to different models of how do you actually leverage technology for those, uh, those of you who are interested. So being a German, I want to finish on a uh, philosophical note. Um, uh, I couldn't, couldn't leave the room without doing that. Um, and uh, you know where I grew up in Heidelberg, we have a philosopher's way. And Goethe was writing his poems there. And uh, Viktor Frankl, the psychotherapist, um, he took a lot of his ideas. And um, Viktor Frankl, he survived the Holocaust, um, and he always wondered why did I, Viktor, survive um, several concentration camps um, psychologically. Of course, physiologically you didn't have a choice, but psychologically a lot of people gave up hope. Um, and he kept this kind of sense of meaning. And he wrote an amazing book about it, those of you interested, The Search for Meaning. Um, but he essentially, he always tried to find a small meaning in the day, so still helping a person, and a big meaning, like still wanting to write a book. But also he had this flight instructor who came to him, and you know he wanted to learn how to fly, um, Victor, and he asked the flight instructor, so, so how do I do it? And the flight instructor told him, look, uh, Victor, if you want to start flying, you have to start like this, um, if you want to fly like this, you have to start like this, because the wind will pull you down. So if you start as a realist, you end up as a depressionist. But if you start as an optimist, you end up as the real realist. And Goethe used to say that a couple of hundred years ago, when he said that if you take man as he is, you make him worse. But if you take man as what he could be, you make him capable of becoming what he can be. And I believe this is particularly true in the kind of context of um, the, the refugee situation we have discussed, in the context of particularly working with vulnerable populations, where it is about the question of, it's not about the current situation where someone's in. It's about identifying what are the unique passions, talents, dreams that are behind that, behind that situation that we see, and then really going about and developing the platforms that help people see where they could be, and then give them the tools to actually get there. Thank you. Um, did I uh, miss anyone? No, I, I hope not. So we, we're kind of done. 
there's, um, there's a lot of food up there, untouched, uh, so please do uh, help yourselves to that. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I had a good time. I thought we had um, a few things to, to uh, digest. Um, I should thank people. Uh, there's a lot of people here who've uh, worked behind the scenes. Um, uh, the, the LSE family, the Institute of Global Affairs, the International Relations Department. I don't know if they're, they're all here, uh, particularly the two Sophies. Is Sophie around? Yeah. I can see one of the Sophies. Could I get a round of applause, please? And is Sophie Wise around? Sophie's, Sophie's uh, at registration. And I see Jerry, I see Alex, I see so many others. So thank you to, to everybody. Um, I think uh, the, the only thing to say is, uh, let's just remember what it is that we're trying to solve. Uh, I don't think we have the solutions, but as I said at the start, uh, this should be the start of a, of a counterinsurgency. So thank you very much. Thanks again for your time. Let's have some food upstairs.